Good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started this morning. I'm going to start by singing Psalms 95. Come let us sing with joy for the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, a great King of all. Sing with joy to the Lord, let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol it with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all our hearts, in His hands on the best of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to Him. This thing is extremely touchy. <clears throat> Please stand for this one. <clears throat> for those using the book, it'll be 650. Listen to our hearts. <clears throat> how do you explain? How do you be seated. Good morning. And we do serve an awesome God. It's a great day today and one that I've been looking forward to for some time. Uh, Susan asked me if I would uh, be introducing 
our guest this morning, I said he needs no introduction. Uh, Dorian Flynn is with us from Partners for Africa, and it's a, it's a privilege to have you with us, brother. Thank you that he's here, and we'll get to hear a lot about what's happening uh, in the continent of Africa. Uh, but again, welcome to everybody who is here. Uh, we have some visitors, and we're glad you're here as well. Uh, let's go to God in prayer as we begin our service. Father, thank you for our time together this morning. Thank you for this beautiful Lord's Day that you've given to us. And we are so thrilled and grateful to have uh, Dorian with us this morning. I pray for Dorian and Sherry and their continued work in, in Africa. I pray that you will bless that work, uh, that that work will continue to grow. Uh, and I know the, the physical needs of a lot of people are being met, but uh, more importantly, the spiritual needs of, of so many people are, uh, are being met and so many people are coming to you because of those efforts. And I just give you thanks that you've let Signal Mountain Church be a, a small part of that. So again, uh, we're, we're grateful for our blessings and that we're able to share those with others. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Number 668. 668. I love you, Lord. Song before communion this morning, Love Lifted Me, 521, 521. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Every deep we sang within, seeking to rise the
above, Jesus completely saves. He will raise you by His love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, builds His will away. He, your Savior, wants to be saved today. Love with me, love with me. everybody. Um, so this morning we're going to talk about communion and we want to start with the offering today and um, I think uh, what's most important here regarding the offering is that we want to give with a, che a cheerful heart. That's what's most important is where is our heart when we go to give and giving can happen in multiple forms. For financial gifts, we have an offering tray located right through that door in the lobby there. And then um, Venmo can also be used for those of us that no longer use checkbooks. <laughs> might be some of us. Um, and the routing address for where to send it in Venmo is inside the bulletin. So for those of you that are more comfortable with that, the routing address is inside the bulletin. Cheerful giving can also come in the form of our time. As most of us understand, Time is money. So grab an elder and cheerfully sign up for some of the numerous duties that church needs to run smoothly. Uh, please, let's go to the Father and pray over it. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and ruling king of the universe. Thank you, Father, for all the many blessings you shower upon us day after day. Please help us demonstrate how grateful we are for all you've done and continue to do by our cheerful, cheerful giving. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. And so the next item I wanna address is part of this memorial is the bread. So this bread is representative of the body of Christ. And I'm not sure how close this actual specs that is to the actual cross that was used, but it's, I bet it's pretty close. So, um, Let's take a look uh, at Luke 23:26. Again, that for those of you who want to follow along in that scripture, it's Luke 23:26. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Why did they do that? because Jesus had been beaten and scourged so badly that he could barely walk. This bread represents the massive sacrifice he put his body through for the forgiveness of our sins. Please pray with me. Father, some of us have experienced some serious physical pain in our lives but none of us have the ability or could come anywhere close to the excruciating pain your son experienced in his heart and body for the forgiveness of our sins. As we eat this bread as a memorial to you, let us reflect on the incomprehensible sacrifice you made for us. Father, we hope that we can bring you joy and our forever grateful appreciation for your tremendous sacrifice by returning to treating each other with love, patience, and kindness. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Now uh, we have the, the, the wine, <laughs> the wine juice. 
that um, this is meant to represent the body, uh, I mean, the blood of Christ. And it's said that life is in the blood. And I think that's quite possibly why um, it's possible for us to bleed to death. Because if life is in the blood, we can, if we run out of blood, we bleed to death. Um, but no blood, no life. Let's look at Leviticus, Leviticus 17.11. So those who are following along, Leviticus 17.11. For the life of the body is in its blood. I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. It is the blood given in exchange for a life that makes purification possible. This memorial ceremony helps us remember that he died for us so we would have the ability to be purified. Please pray with me for the purified life in Christ through the power of his resurrected blood. Father, just, we can't thank you enough for the sacrifice. We can't comprehend it. We, we can't put our, our heads around why you did that for us, the love you have for us. Well, you did it because of the love you have for us, but we can't wrap our heads around that magnitude of love. So just as we drink this cup, Father, just help us to live our lives in such a way that is always honorable to you and, and live our lives in a holy manner. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Scripture reading and prayer, number 170. Please stand for this, 170. Then remain standing for the Scripture reading and prayer. <clears throat> Lord, the light of your love is
Good morning. What a beautiful day. Today we're reading Romans 10, 14 through 17. How can people have faith in the Lord and ask Him to save them if they have never heard about Him? And how can they hear unless someone tells them? And how can anyone tell them without being sent by, by the Lord? The scripture says it's a beautiful sight to see even the feet of someone coming to preach the good news. Yet not everyone has believed the message. For example, the prophet Isaiah asked, Lord, has anyone believed what we said? No one can have the faith without hearing the message about Christ. It says a lot. With that, I'd like to say a quick prayer. Lord, please give us the strength in today's world to be stronger with the words that we say about you to convince these people that you are the greatest without you we would not be here and I know the world's going in the wrong direction and it's just better for us to be stronger at what we say to be more convincing to make people understand how important it is to follow you Lord thank you for everything you give us thank you for this beautiful day you've offered us it's great to wake up and see the beauties that you offer us. Lord, give us the strength to help out the Ukrainians. Also, for all the sick members of our church, please give us the strength to help them. In Jesus Christ, amen. Well, this is wonderful to be here. I, I, uh, I've been anticipating this as well and are, are excited. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful partnership that you have. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just been so effective and, and so uh, meaningful to Sherry and I personally, but it has made such a difference globally. And, and, and hopefully by the time you've uh, seen these slides today, you, you, you will feel like this has been such a wonderful uh, um, partnership that we have had going here. I first of all want to thank the elders and I'll thank Greg because this is his time <laughs> uh, for, for the opportunity and, and the church as a whole. And, and by the way, what, what, how wonderful it was for me to sit and listen to you teach because that was a blessing. That was a blessing this morning, that class. It really was. Um, just to let you know that my wife uh, sends her love to you all and she is so thankful for all the prayers and the cards. I don't know how many cards we got from this church family at Signal Mountain. And I just want to want to thank you so much. It meant so much to her. She's about 75 or 80 uh, percent down the road as far as getting over shingles. And as most of you know, it went into her eyes. So it was the internal that really uh, was bad. So anyway, I'm leaving uh, April the 3rd, Lord willing. I say I for Africa. Uh, but she, uh, she, the doctor said for her to just uh, hold on. We've got a full uh, plethora of campaigns this summer that are coming. And so she will be able to join, uh, join us then. So, uh, so anyway, but thank you. Thank you all so, so much. Uh, I call this the hub because I want you to get an idea of where we're working. We've added another country even. We're in six countries. We started in Zimbabwe because I grew up there and it's our hub but it, our hub has expanded now and just recently we added of course the country of Namibia you, you have been a part of the ACT project Africa container transport our son our son our older son runs this but you have been a vital part in fact you've got boxes here already and I was just mentioned to Susan just at the beginning of the service I said you know we're about to ship a, uh, um, a, a, a mobile clinic that's going to go to our school and so we want to put all those boxes on it as well. So we'll let you know when we can get, but it'll come out, it'll, go, it'll leave out of Healing Hands in Nashville. So we are thankful for all of that because it's right there where all those primary schools that you collected for. Um, that's our daughter and son. And uh, we load here and then we ship over there. Uh, who would have thought? Uh, got that one slide. Little <laughs> but, uh, but this is our latest container. You know, last year, well, well, you know the supply chain, and you know the problems that are going on with it. So 
we were able to get two containers last year and we shipped one i mean these are people backlog but we shipped one to namibia this is one being unloaded in, in namibia and 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 we got another one to lesotho so we are we are thankful for that when i was here last i met with the elders and i said could you please help this preacher get a truck and get a transport and that's the truck <laughs> and austin vimba uh, whose son is uh, that's bruce austin came here he's passed on to be with the lord but he came here to Heritage Christian, which was International Bible College at the time. He went back and him and his wife and others, including his son, planted 30 congregations. And so Bruce has taken up the mantle and going with his father. And I think he had uh, 650,000 miles on his old truck. <laughs> so thank you all so, so, so much for, for, what, for what you did there. Um, I don't know. Um, if your arms are still not long enough, what I mean by that is you might be getting new glasses at different times. And if you went to your house, you probably might find right now, if you went looking, that there would be several pairs of glasses. All I'm saying is, that's Brother Moyo on the right. He could not read the Bible for two years because he didn't have a pair of glasses. And it's not like going down to Walmart. <laughs> Let me just go see, what, see, I might probably need number three now. But, but anyway, I can go get it, not him. So he had to have his wife read him the Bible for two years as he prepared his lessons. And when we brought this box of random eyeglasses that people had given us, he went through it and found, found glasses that, that worked. And then he couldn't read because he started crying. <laughs> then when he finished crying, then, you know, then he, could, he could read. So what I'm saying is, you know, if, you, uh, if you've got glasses at home, collect them, bring them. You know, we'll, uh, I mean, we can use them. None of them will be wasted. All that we do, all the good works, the end game is knowing Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. And so it's the sharing of the good news. And there are avenues of Partners of Africa that we're doing all these good works, avenues being created so that we can share Jesus Christ. And what has happened is it has just exploded in Southern Africa. We, begin, we began our 14th year last month. And so we are working now. And, and, and just let me, when I say began uh, uh, 14th year, I mean this, all this work was started from scratch. Okay. So now we're working with over 350 ministers, and we have seminars every other weekend in five countries. And so it's critical because of the congregations that have been planted. We have planted 90 congregations in 13 years. And so the retention right now is between 78 to 79 percent. And the reason is, is because we got, we've got leadership seminars going on, we've got youth seminars going on, we've got preacher seminars going on constantly, so that when someone comes up out of the waters of baptism ready for this new life, we don't say, cross your fingers and good luck. We grab them right away. We are added to a body, uh, God's body, I know that, but they are plugged in on several levels. They... The normal program of the church, oh yes, but then additional Bible study and then some of our good works, we immediately join, join our team. Man, we, 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 we feed in orphans in this area, whatever, but we try to plug them on three different levels and, and it makes all the difference in the world. We distributed 47 bicycles last year to rural preachers. Do you know these, these guys right here, <laughs> they, um, they on a Sunday morning, which they which they have already because they six hours ahead of us but they've covered three different congregations uh, three uh you know uh they'll speak at this village and then this village there, and, and on a given sunday they cover they'll cover about 10 or 15 miles walking were they so glad to get those bicycles do you know that we have one brother there he's 75 years old he got on one of those bikes and let's go he says, I remember, Brother Flynn, I remember. <laughs> so years ago, he must have learned. He said, yeah, yeah. But, but he, is, he uses that bicycle every Sunday morning, you know. This is one of the 90 congregations. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because this is the church established that we're our school. 
uh, is. And uh, we, just, we just wanted you to, to see that picture. That, church, that congregation's about two years old now and just, just growing, just growing so much. Um, and these ladies uh, help us in the distribution of Millie Meal, which is their basic diet uh, uh, for those that live in rural areas. They make cereal out of it. They can make a, a main meal out of it, you know, but they eat it all the time. And so it's a corn meal. <coughs> And so they are helping distribute to, to families in the rural areas. And I really appreciate these, these sisters. Marriage and family seminars are going on every second week as well. I mean, we, we are really, you know, this all started slow, but the momentum is just unbelievable right now. And I, I want you to know that Africa as a whole is a patriarchal society. So a lot of these younger men that uh, get married, they, they've got this... There's an immediate conflict with the Bible, <laughs> you know, from what they have learned. So Sherry and I are conducting this marriage seminar, and it's only, uh, this seminar is, is targeted for young marrieds, you know. Been a married a year to about two years. So I spoke to the general audience, and then Sherry took the ladies, and I, I did a Q&A with the men, and I wanted to find out where they were, and I, I said, uh, I said, so you've got a problem you know, and you're trying to solve it. Uh, how do you approach that? Be and take it that you don't have the answer. So one guy put up his hand right away and he said, he said, Brother Flynn, I found something out. I mean, this was an absolute new discovery. You could see his eyes wide open. He says, you know, I had a problem. I, I couldn't solve it. He said, I prayed to the Lord also. And he said, I just thought I'd try one thing. I'd ask my wife. And you know what? She had some good ideas. <laughs> I said, wow. That's, you know, <laughs> you know. So, so all I'm saying is that oh, open to the gospel in, in all ways. And so the church is getting stronger, you know. This was our 100th well. We, oh, by the way, we've done 107 wells. Our goal was... I, it just blows me away. Our goal was 50 wells in 10 years. We just began our 14th year. And we've done 107. But this was our 100th well in Zambia. And this lady was, was doing a three-mile uh, 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 walk, mile and a half to the river. If the river's dry, you start digging till you get to the water. Um, mind out all the feces because the animals that walk down the dry riverbed fill your buckets and she was lucky to have a, a, her son who had a had a donkey and a cart and she could fill about four buckets and here she goes home three and a half mile trek that takes up most of her day we drilled a well in the village where we had planted a, 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 a church and she said I am so happy she says, I only walk 100 meters now. Doesn't have indoor plumbing, <laughs> no power, but man, I mean, she was just so happy. And I, I thought the face, uh, that was just that was just fantastic. This was a primary school close to the, the land that they gave us for our high school. It's Amazon Primary School. This is one of the, one of the primary schools that what you have collected, they're going to get some of, these, uh, some of those supplies. And we had just done a well there. <clears throat> and I want you to know that at this primary school, 400 students, each class is designated a day, meaning when they come in the morning, that class has to go to the well. They didn't have a well, so the, the, the well was almost half a mile away. And that class, that's all they did till they filled up all the buckets for the rest of the school. That was part of the, of, of the weekly chores. And now they've got their own well, so we're thankful for that. So, 107 wells. I don't know what, you know, I, I just, I thought about it on the way here, and of course I couldn't, I was driving, and then I forgot about it. I don't know what the population of Chattanooga is, but I, right now, 300,000 people get clean water from our wells every single day. Every single day, 300,000 people. And we are thankful. You think of the opportunities that come that way. By the way, that lady has green tomatoes. She needs to be told about fried green tomatoes, don't you think? <laughs> five more, we've got five more villages targeted for this coming here. And uh, just remember this, we don't drill randomly. 
It's all about the furtherance of the gospel and the sharing the opportunities that come that way. So either a church is about to be planted there or, or there is already a congregation of the Lord's people there. So, so where we drill wells, okay? So here is our mom project, which is making orphan meals, and we feed a little over 1,000 orphans a week, besides all the special feeding that you saw those ladies distributing to, to other people. But... Uh, I want you to know that we are, um, we decided that if we were going to do good works, every penny was going to go to the good work. It wasn't going to be anybody, there wasn't going to be any, uh, 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 you know, officiating costs. <laughs> so if you give a dollar for food, a dollar goes for food. And all these ladies see it as their ministry. The only thing that they get as far as material, materially, is a plate of food and and i guess they deserve it since they cooked it <laughs> so this is typical africa to see a child feeding a child um, there are several villages in southern africa it's better now that you go into and you will find um, retirees you'll find grandparents and you'll find children and you'll find teenagers some young adults, but, but, but the t late 20s, early 30s, you won't find any because they're dead of AIDS for a lot of them. And so you have children raising children. So to see that at one of our feedings, you know, that's his older sister. And she's feeding him. By the way, that whole plate was cleaned. <laughs> Dud. <laughs> you know, it's not like my grandchildren. I'm sure it doesn't happen here. But my grandchildren, when they see some food, they say, well, I don't like that, but I like that. I'm sure you guys don't say that. <laughs> yeah. but, not, but not there, you know, not there. <laughs> this past year, in spite of COVID, we had 629 men mostly to Christ. And that's why we have all those seminars going because people are being blessed. The year before COVID, we had 1,100, a little over 1,100 to obey the gospel. And this year already, we've had 61 to obey the gospel. And so what comes with that is maturing. And then we also need, uh, right now we need about 120 Bibles, $20 a piece, uh, Zulu Bibles. That's where we are right now. But we, we'll get it. Uh, I just wanted to throw that out just in case anybody might want to think about it. <laughs> So, this is one of the primary high schools. We came, uh, uh, and, and the wonderful thing about Zimbabwe, especially, is that um, they, they, most of the places teach in English. So, when we give out these New Testaments, which is the last kind of bit we had, um, they take these English New Testaments, they take it home, and they, they, their families have never had this before. Now, what I want you to notice about this picture first of all, the appreciation the young man has up front there, smiling. But then I want you to notice the guy behind him. Okay, now that's that's a boy that can be anywhere in the world, about that age, don't you think? I mean, that's that's just commonality there. By the way, he's coming to our school, and I've already got his name. No, 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 he doesn't have it. Uh, but he is coming to our school. <laughs> so that's just such a wonderful. You know, we 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 help f help feed these children, and then the teachers let us come in and teach the Bible. And we got these primary schools, we, we go there once a week and teach the Bible just because of our good works. And now we've been able to send Bibles home. But, in the, but with our teaching once a week, we are preparing them for our high school. You know, and so we, we're excited about that. This is our clinic. And it opened up in 2017. And we've had, of course, over 200 babies born there. We have... Uh, treated poisonous snake bites, uh, uh, um, you know, fractures. I just got a story uh, three weeks ago about a, a boy. Now, in Africa, children walk to school, millions, all the continent of Africa. If you go down the highway, you just see children walking to school, all ages, all ages, from five years old on up. They're walking to school. And you go down, coming from our country, you go, this can't, I mean, this is crazy. Well, one car, this boy was running late and uh, don't know what happened, but the car hit him and he's in the grass. He's about eight years old. And another car comes by. This is close to our clinic. Another car comes by and sees the boy crying and laying in the, in the grass. Both of his legs are broken. 
And uh, so they gather him up and they bring him to our clinic. And they were able to treat him enough to get him to a hospital, prevent shock and that, you know. And so w w what, what does that do when the word goes out through the community? Because you're the only source of medical there. The opportunities to share the gospel are absolutely immense. We opened our school. We got a brand, we got a brand new high school. And we are so excited. And it opened up. On, 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 a, on a loving day, it was, it was Valentine's Day, February the 14th, <laughs> uh, this year we opened that school and we are so, so excited about this. This is, this is absolutely momentous. Um, so let me, let me say a few things. First of all, we have finished one classroom wing, which we had done when I was here last time. We are building a second classroom wing. And, we, and that second classroom wing is the Bible and Science Wing because we want them to know that the science and Bible, that science and the Bible go together, and so we're going to build. So we're building it together. So, so um, I, I wanted you to see this too to let you know that uh, once these are built, it's minimal maintenance. There is no central unit. The weather is like Arizona. It's hot, but it's dry in the summertime. Nine months summer, three months winter. So once the only only wood is the trusses. And then, they'll, and then they plaster the inside, okay? And that's the two. The one is finished on the left. The other one is finished outside, but it has to be finished inside. And so I have the one request for Bible, and, and it, it's about 20000 to finish the inside, but we, uh, we only lack 7500 Now, I'm not asking you. Uh, all I'm asking you is if you can make a dent, that would be awesome, okay? Okay. Um, those desks came from Marcio Bible School in Florence, Alabama. And those are special desks because my children, Sherry and I, our children, sat behind those desks. And they have all done really well. So I feel like those are intelligent desks. And it's going to bless our school. You know? This was the math class. Now, realize this picture was taken 10 days after Valentine's. And it's a math class, and they already got their arms up. And I can guarantee you one reason why they got their arms up, because their parents told them, this is, and this is, this is what makes our school so special. It is the only high school in this area. None of the generations before in Zimbabwe have ever gone to high school. And these grandparents and these parents have told these kids, you better not blow it. <laughs> I know the answer. <laughs> I know the answer. <laughs> This is our cultural and arts class. The reason I wanted to show you that is because we're not there to build an American high school. That it, it, it does not need to have what all our American high schools have as far as its material requirements to open up. And it, doesn't need, and, and it won't be taught the traditions or the history of America because this is within the African setting and they will know their culture, but they will know their culture in the context of Jesus Christ and his truth. That's what doesn't change. And so that's why we are so, oh, by the way, Jackson Christian, Jackson, Tennessee, uh, they, they also are one of our sister schools. And so they have the same colors as Mars Hill. So here is, our, here is the beginning of our girls' soccer team. And it has Jackson Christian shirts and Mars Hill shorts. <laughs> and they are so proud of it. <laughs> So here is, our, here is our sign. This is the, as you enter our school, Amazon Christian Academy. And I'm thankful to my middle grandson, who's in the eighth grade, that put, put all that together for us. And the board decided to adopt it. And that's our motto, preparing students for life globally and eternally. That's part, one of the classes at their first assembly. We begin with the freshman grade. And we're going to do one grade a year. But we're not stopping there. Lord willing, and if the Lord tarries, these kids, kids now, young men and women, when they graduate, will go, will have the opportunity, if they have applied themselves, to go into our first year of university. And so our prayer is that we will have these kids for about five, some maybe five years, but some even close to ten years, and when they graduate, they'll know how to, besides getting on in this world, 
as far as making a living, they will know how to plant churches. And they will have a command of God's word that wherever they go. So what are you saying, Dorian? I'm saying this is an evangelistic tool. This is what this is. Um, you see those children in their nice uniforms? That's the houses they come out of. And that's why uniforms makes it so... They're on a, on, a, on, a, on a level playing field. But they are even where they live. That's what they live in. Somebody said to me, Dorian, why, why, where are you building a school? Why, uh, why are you building it in the city? I said, no, we're going to a place where a school is needed, where there's no high school. Government doesn't have a high school, nobody. And we're going to take children out of abject poverty. And won't the story be amazing that a child comes out of that and ends up being a doctor, a teacher, a farmer, or whatever, plants churches, comes out of that with no plumbing, no power, no... So that's our faculty. What makes us special too? They're all Zimbabweans. They're all Zimbabwean Christian young people that have applied themselves. They all have a degree in Bible. And they, for two of them, but by the end of the year, will have their masters in their particular field. And uh, they between the ages of about 28 to about 37, meaning that's their country, they're not going anywhere, meaning they're young enough, we've got a long runway, <laughs> so it gives the school stability. And so, so it's absolutely a, a joyous time. We, we uh, had our first PTA meeting, parents and teachers, and also we had the students and we fed them. And so they all had a good time, boys there. <laughs> and I just had to show you this, just because this is so, so you've got to have an athletic field. We're going to have sports and all of that. In fact, we're conducting two sports camps this summer at our school and then two more in the next, uh, the next summer. But we were given 100 acres, wonderful. But it was just bush, nothing. So, so the field's marked there, but now you've got to go clear it. And look at those boulders behind them. I mean, they, it was, and, and the field was like this, you know. So we had to level it. Do you know that grandmothers and mothers came out and cleared, <laughs> cleared those boulders? And then we clear, you know, and then that's what it looks like now. And right now we, we're doing the eight lanes of track around it. Now, let me just tell you something. That water is from our wells. The power to pump the water is solar. Our school is not on the grid. All our housing, all our teachers live on campus now. All our housing is supplied by solar power. And uh, it is one of the ways that you can make uh, 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 something that you can make an entity in Africa self-propagating. By using solar and by, use, and by drilling your own water. And by the way... I've mentioned to you about our cattle. We're over 200 head of cattle now. And, uh, uh, and our clinic has been already taken care of by our tomatoes because we, we have a few plants. You know, we plant about uh, 18,000 a year. So, and that pays for our clinic. So. And you didn't know Sherry was the elephant whisperer, did you? Yeah. <laughs> so I put these two here. This is my, this is my wife, Sherry. And I have a very good friend that has this lion. Well, he, he raises lions, Antelope Park. You can go look at it online. And he has these elephants. And that mother elephant, I think, really liked Sherry, you know, so she had a good time. And then my son, this was taken several years ago, but you can still do this. You know, you can go walk with the younger lions. And um, so just a little temptation for some of you that also might want to enjoy the wildlife of Africa. We can give you a, a, a good time as far as that's concerned. If there is any new project that you might want to do in the future, we, we have begun backpacks with my daughter, and I won't go into it now, but I just want you to know if you're interested to do one or two. We want to do 1,000 backpacks a year. We're not asking for one church. We're asking for several to help in that. Let me close um, my thoughts this morning by just sharing you these things for you to take home with you. Why? You know, you have this passion for Jesus Christ. And when you have this passion for Jesus Christ, you, uh, you are presented with these wonderful components. They are part of your life. The first one is, you realize that we are here to make a difference. 
you know. I, I'm going to, I'm retiring. No, I'm not really. I'm just using this example, okay. I'm retiring and I want you to know that I have my house paid off and my house at the lake is paid off and I can afford to buy a new car every other year. You, you're the same age as me and, and, and you don't even have your house paid off. Really, is that what life's about? Self-actualization? Self Are we here just to be uh, uh, survivors? No. It's still J-O-Y, isn't it? Jesus first, yourself last, and others in between. And what, whatever I'm blessed with, 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 with an amazing brain and, and mental acuity or, or, or with material possessions that I've been able to acquire because of... Uh, Maybe I inherited, I don't know, but to use all of that for God's glory. We are here to find freedom. Not to spend our life settling issues of yesterday. My glasses are fogged up. Well, they're not really fogged up, but, but you know what I mean in the spiritual sense. My glasses are fogged up. I can't see because I can't forgive. Or I can't get rid of this resentment. You know, I've had a lot of wonderful blessings in life, and I know Greg the same as far as being in ministry and to see people recover and, 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 and to see people changed and, and to, to see this revolution that goes on when they embrace the life of Christ. But every so often, and I'm still, I'm still trying, I'll have a person come who, who's come out of a bad situation. I, 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 I've, got a, I've got a guy right now that we, we, all through the years we've talked but at 19, it's when we first spoke. And at 19, he came, he says, listen, my, my, my dad drinks and my mom sleeps around. And he says, I don't know what's going to happen when I come home after school. And he said, I, I just don't know what's going to happen to me. And impressed upon the young man then that, that Jesus is far bigger than anything that he can, than he can face. I mean, he, he, she, he, uh, he knows... And I explained to him, your parents know the answer, and so do you. And so I helped him. He's 50 years old now, and we just talked, and he still went back to that. His life is still not straightened. So I just want to say that, do we spend all our lives with these? It's real what happened. But do we spend all our lives still using those same stories so that the, we never grow up? And our life has ended up wasted, let alone all the negative ramifications with our children and grandchildren? Listen, our God is just asking us, I am bigger than anything that you're facing and give it over to me. And begin the walk with him and you'll be amazed the power that you will receive. One final thought. We are here to know God. And you say, Dorian, <laughs> I wish God would just tell me what to do, you know, just so that I'd know. Well, okay, I'm going to do that this morning, all right? But I, I, I'm going to read what he said. <clears throat> Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. This is what the Lord says. The wise person should not boast in wisdom. The strong should not boast in his strength. The wealthy should not boast in his wealth. But the one who boasts, here it is, should boast in this. That he knows and understands me. That I am the Lord showing faithful love, justice, and right living on earth. For I delight in these things. This is the Lord's declaration. I'm not going to get into the nuances in your life. But you know what he wants. So, we blessed with four grandchildren. And um, I, I think, it's, a, I think it's, a, it's wrong if I step down and don't talk about my grandchildren. I just think it's wrong, you know. We've got three grandsons and I have a granddaughter. A granddaughter has GLUT1 syndrome. There's only about 500 people in the world that have this. And she's seven and she still can't walk. Um, it's to do with the motor movement. But she is smart. She is so smart. And her and her dad go back and forth teasing each other, you know. So my son is telling me this. 
He says, Dad, I, I walked through the living room the other day and Wesley's sitting and she's working something on an iPad. And I went past and I said, I'm Wesley and I like to sing these songs and I like to play these games. He said, she didn't pay no attention to me. She just looked at no expression. He said, I went into the kitchen. I came back out and she said, and I'm daddy and I wear jeans and I walk around drinking coffee. <laughs> And I thought, I, I thought, boy, I, well, I told him, I said, boy, you know, our kids know us, you know. She knows you. She's got you down to a T, you know. Um, I want to know God that way. And you know what's so, you know what's so um, wonderful about that? Is because he wants us to know him too. And he's got this wonderful book that we call the Bible. The Holy Spirit that lives within us. And he says, I desire a relationship with you. That's why I've gone out of my way to provide you this avenue so that we can have, so that we can be family. So today, just like that African traveling on the road to Gaza, that 50 mile stretch, he's reading from the Messianic prophet and he doesn't understand what he's reading. And the Holy Spirit provides, Philip comes in there. Do you understand? No, I don't. And the Bible says he preached to him, Jesus told him about the prophecies, told him what Jesus did, because that's what it's about. Galatians 3.27 says, For many of you being baptized into Christ have put on Christ. It's not the getting the wet and the immersion. I understand all the significance of that, but man, it's, it's, it's a walk and it's a life with Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. And it's wonderful that we can come together and we can celebrate that and also say to you, if you're here this morning, quit the casual stroll with Christ, if that's where you are, and have the serious relationship with him that he desires so much. Won't you come as we stand and sing? Lord, you Thank you, Doran. It is always an honor. It's always a blessing and an encouragement. I wish we could plug in to your energy sometimes and transfer that. If you would, uh, please be seated. We've got several announcements before we dismiss this morning. <clears throat> First, I'd like to uh, recommend that everyone uh, pick up a, a copy of the bulletin. Uh, they're, they're printed copies available or they're distributed online. There's a lot of information in here, and we're not going to read over every single one. Uh, but please pick that up and, and, and follow along so you, you know what's going on. There's a lot going on in our church family. We want to share a couple of things just as a reminder. <clears throat> For those of you that may not have heard, Bob Stewart's father passed away. And the visitation will be this coming Tuesday, the 22nd, uh, between 4 and 7, the central time zone in Cookville at the College Side Church of Christ. And then Wednesday, the 23rd at noon, will be the, the funeral service. The 
if anyone is a, if would like to go, the, the bus will be uh, leaving here at around 4 at 4.30, that's Eastern time, this coming Tuesday. Bill is willing to, to drive the bus, so that's for Bob's, the visitation for Bob Stewart's family. Tuesday, meet here at 4.30, make the trip to Cookville, and then, uh, and then return. <clears throat> a couple other announcements I want to make. Uh, this next Sunday, Lord willing, on the 27th, there'll be an elder deacon minister meeting. It'll be 3 o'clock on Sunday, the, the 20, 20 sec, 27th. That'll be in the fellowship hall. And then on Saturday, the 26th, there'll be a baby shower honoring Madison Drennan. Uh, I, I can't, I'm not going to butcher her last name, sorry, but... <laughs> For, for Madison, uh, that's 2 to 4 p.m., and the registration information is in our bulletin. <clears throat> so a couple of announcements, a prayer request for to keep in mind. I uh, would like for you to, keep, uh, to lift up Steve Clark. He is uh, in the hospital. He's getting a stent put in. His kidney related. I don't you know a lot of the details, but play for Steve. Also, Kendall's father is, uh, has been in the hospitalized with seizures, and he's in a coma. So please pray for Kendall and his father. If you would lift up Liz Long, she's at Siskam and for rehab, and her husband Johnny is at Morning Point. Jenny's brother Bill White uh, is uh, struggling with uh, the aftermath of, a, of an amputation. Please pray for Bill. John Curtis's father is in rehab, and then Sandra Fear asks for prayers for her father Tom Heal. So any other announcements or prayer requests that we need to mention? But if we not, this is, this is a great day to be together. It's, as somebody says often, it's always good for God's people to be together. I've been, uh, I need to trademark that saying. So everybody says, David Bible always says. But it's true. It's good for God's people to be together. It's great for us to be together today, not only with Dor Dorian and the message that he brings, which is always inspiring, but also we get the chance to publicly recognize uh, a couple of new members that have placed, want to place membership with our family. <clears throat> so, and we will uh, ask them to, to come up front, if you would, Sam Wright, who was, who was baptized recently. Yeah, please come on up, come on up here. And then uh, Lee and, and Mary Margaret Whitfield. Lee, Lee, yes, he's real, Lee is real. You want to come up, uh, if, uh, if you would, uh, Butch, do you mind coming, kind of coming up and being the one to offer the prayer at the, at the conclusion? So at this time, we would like to do our, our, our traditional welcome uh, circle. So if you would, everybody stand up and gather around. We're going to gather around the, around the wall. This is the first welcome circle we have had in person here in this building in I don't know how long. And this is awesome. Our circle is growing. So let's sing a common love and then I'll offer a word of prayer as we will. A common love for each other, a common Let's pray. Our Father and our God, it is truly, it's just truly a blessing to be together with our brothers and sisters with, in the name of Jesus, our Messiah, and covered by your, your spirit. We thank you for this, uh, this body that meets here. We pray for, we pray for our new, new members and all that you will, that you will bring. May we be fa faithful with the uh, with the souls that you bring, may you open doors for us to bring more into your family. 
we lift up and we, we pray for Dorian. We pray for the work, the Partners for Africa. And it is amazing what you are doing through them. And we are grateful to be a small part of that. We know, Lord, your hand is moving, not just in Southern Africa or on Signal Mountain, but throughout this world. Help us to, to open our eyes to see where you're working and, and just jump in with both feet. We pray that we will be your hands and your feet and the salt and light to this world. We pray through the power of Jesus. Amen. We're dismissed. One more thing. Uh, I don't usually look at my phone, but I knew what was coming. And several people who weren't here today text and go, Dorian is awesome. What does he need? Please let me know. So uh, we'll find that out. That's it. Today is Nick's birthday. Oh, okay.